Howdy from Arlington, Texas, y'all. Hope this video finds you well. Uh, it's been a while. Yes, I have a beautiful, beautiful singing voice. My wife absolutely loves it. Uh, but yeah, it's been a while. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, I look at my follower count and I look at the amount of people that, you know, have watched some of the videos and, and not a hot, not a lot of, not a high percentage, you know, have watched my last few videos. So maybe you have, maybe you haven't noticed that, you know, I've not been posting much here. Um, you know, I've really cut back. I'm still, I, I really cut back who I subscribe to, to people that interact with me one way or the other, whether they watch my page, they interact when I comment. Um, but I've really cut back on that. I, I, I'm, st I'm still watching a lot of channels, but I don't comment as much as I used to. Um, you know, I'm just jaded with the hobby. I mentioned that. So I've made some changes, but those have helped. Um, I've just entirely changed how I'm social media-ing. And it's been working well. Uh, like I said, just annoyed with modern sports. It's It's been happening with pro sports for a while. Um, but man, now all the political bullshits made its way down into college sports and racing. So yeah, I'm about done with just about anything modern. Still looking forward to IndyCar and hopeful for WVU football, but man, that's about it. What I have found myself doing is starting to read just a little bit more. Uh, I've gotten into the George Gibson book. I mentioned, you know, dozen, couple dozen videos back. Um, and on over this past weekend, I just ordered four more books, three baseball, one racing, and all the baseball are about um, something to do with Texas baseball, so trying to, to learn a little bit more about the history. Um, you know, I just, I, I still see that I'll be probably collecting vintage and a, or pre-war and a few things, but, you know, just just chilling out, taking a little bit of a step back, and it's been good. Um, but I now understand the, the old men that I used to roll my eyes at, um, the ones that were like, they don't like how sports have changed, blah, 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 blah. And of course I'm like, oh, you know, you're an old man, whatever. And I rolled my eyes, but call me a boomer, call me a curmudgeon, whatever you will. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm much happier this way. And I'm just going to read about the good old days or things from, you know, when I was a kid that I like that aren't necessarily so old and we'll just go from there but anyway on to show and tell so you see some uh things in front of you so and i i assume that people read titles before they decide if they're going to watch a video so um you know the kindness of youtubers uh, i've mentioned in the past that i think youtube kindness you know if somebody sends you something takes the time and puts the thought into it you know you should show it and I, th I think that in general they just they deserve their own videos their own thank you i just i can't imagine getting someone something from someone and not not you know giving them a you know credit I, I don't know i mean i guess that's not why we send because i i don't send for that reason but i guess i'm also just on my end i don't ever want to seem like i'm unappreciative i guess so got some things to show off um the first we're gonna work like you're reading a book we're gonna look over there at jt as you know him triple crown 24 yes i finally have a triple crown 24 card i wonder if any of the uh i wonder i wonder if i can get those graded what would happen if i sent that into psa sgc or something but um JT uh, somehow found some stuff and uh, or was going through some stuff. Obviously, he's uh, selling. You know, that's, that's that's his game. But he did find this uh, sapphire, which these are beautiful. Jed Jerko. I think we know what print runs are on these, or somebody knows, not me. Okay, let's see if I can get rid of this little. Shouldn't I be able to get rid of that? Boom! There we go. Ah, that's much better. Yeah, I, lo I love the the sapphire looks, the cracked ice, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, Jed Jerko, he's no 
You know, he's no household name, but he is from my hometown. And I don't actively search his stuff out, but if I'm going through dime boxes or, you know, I see something random online or something, every once in a while I'll pick him up. I, I don't even do eBay searches other than for a couple of random cards of his. But Home Down Hero played uh, at my Crosstown Rival High School before playing at WVU and becoming a second round pick, I believe. It's either second or third. Yeah, second round of the Padres, and now he is with the Brewers this year. He signed after finishing out last year, I believe, in Los Angeles. But yeah, as you can tell how much baseball I watch, he's from my hometown, and I do collect him, but I can't even 100% remember where he was at the end of last year. So, that is awesome, JT. Thank you. Um, I will also obviously keep the note, and I've kind of taken the approach of what some of the other folks say, and I'm, I just don't read notes. It's not like they're all sappy or anything, but hey. Um, so the second one, Eddie. Of Eddie's baseball autographs, at least he's Eddie's baseball autographs for now. He's debating uh, debating um, changing the name because he's uh, started a... Uh, expanding out just a little bit into some other sports. Make myself a little note here. So, and it's actually, I think it's about that time, again, because it would be the last Sunday of the month is coming up. So, at the end of, he always has some excess autographs, and he does a giveaway each month. So, I recommend you check his channel out. I will go through and everyone's that I address here. I will post links to their pages below. So you will find one to Eddie's baseball autographs. Uh, does a lot of TTMing. Um, some good information, even if, if you're not that into it, because he does so many that it might be somebody you're like, oh, hey, I'm not usually into this, but I'd love to get this one player that I loved growing up. So great channel. I definitely recommend checking them out. Um, I've think i watch all of his videos not just not just giveaway videos anyway i was one of the three or four winners in last month's contest so i just wanted to say thank you and show off andre thornton mike eastler paul wagner no which i remember him playing because i grew up an hour south of pittsburgh chase anderson and Ray Soff. So the reason I enter his, even though sometimes, you know, there may not be a particular card I'm interested in, is A, he does multiple lots, so you just don't know what you're going to get. Um, but another reason is, if there is any of these that fit into your collection, uh, get a hold of me. Let me know, and I will happily pass on the love that Eddie passes out monthly i don't know that sounds kind of weird but anyway uh would be happy to get these into the hands of whether it's you're collecting a team a player you know i know there are a lot of people that collect sets um of signed cards actually i think this one i want to say that my buddy uh oh my gosh why am i having such a rough time anyway one of my buddies i believe he's planning on working on an 87 donner's sign set Gary, gosh, the Gary V brand. Holy crap, I'm having a rough day. It's Sunday, I just got, or Friday, I just got off work. My brain is fried. I think he's working on, he may be wanting to do the 87 Donner set sign, so I need to check with him on that, or he'll watch this video and hopefully let me know. But anyway, if uh, there's any of these that would fit into your collection, let me know, and we will get them into your hands. That would be awesome. So moving on, we've got... Jeff airtime so a couple weeks ago I joined his Sunday morning trivia for the first time and was fortunate enough to be a winner the question was I believe the year was 1984 and it was this Minnesota twin finished second in MVP voting and I'm just thinking so I don't know the answer necessarily but I knew that was too early for Puckett because Puckett's rookies were in the extended rookies were in 84 and his regular rookies are in 85 really the only other guy I could think of from that time because that was a, that would have been three years before I got into sports. Um, so I just I just threw it out. I said Herbeck, and by gosh, it was. And so I got to pick 
from some cards, and you know he had some things, and this was the one I picked. 1985 Dwight Gooden, so I believe that would be a rookie because his 84s were the XRCs. But this is the first time I've owned one of those, and I've been collecting since 1987 nonstop. So I believe, Eric, those back pages will approve of my choice. Then he included a couple of additional cards in there. Got a Raphael Devers and a Jack Flaherty. So thank you, Jeff Airtime. I enjoyed it. I did not make it to your most recent one. Um, but plan to do so going forward. Had a great time. Actually, could have won uh, Could have won a few more times, but it's obviously it's great that he only lets people win once. Um, so, yeah. Thanks, Jeff. I'll be back. All right, so the next one was not actually something through the mail, but it is the kindness of a fellow YouTuber, tuber, Jeremy IPTTM. I don't even know if he mentioned it, but I know he was up at the Dallas Card Show because I went to the Dallas Card Show because he was there. We met up. Um, Matt hung out, you know, off and on. He uh, helped me. Uh, he helped me spend some money, but good time it was good to see him can't wait to see him again he uh left me with a little a little gift so take a look through it some charles barkley's i do not remember these and it's rare that i honestly just like don't remember or don't know of a card but these are some kind of upper deck mcdonald's cards and then somehow i want to say on twitter like the day after he gave me these and i went through them and saw them or i looked at them at the show as he gave them to me i saw them again and i was like i have never seen those before so we got some other nice ones here i believe that would be a gold signature and those were pretty short printed i believe i don't remember this particular year but i think they were less than one a box they were they were pretty darn rare to get across all sports and there's another gold signature there so those are two cards that definitely back in the day i did not have a sky tech force like a foil beautiful gotta get my barkley binder going here soon i'm gonna i'm using the uh jt mentioned them on a video from the last couple days, the Z folios that Eric, those back pages, talks about a lot. And I, I am with those guys. I absolutely love those. I just need to purchase about 75 more of them. A round mound of rebound. So these, I don't, yeah, these look to be some kind of Broder cards. But man, when you like to collect a player, it's awesome to have anything different i mean they definitely kind of you know like you said you look at the back and they definitely fit that 80s broder knockoff look but just the photos of them super cool they kind of remind me actually the front they kind of remind me of like a team pocket schedule more chuck desert storm chuck that photo's weird man like the skin tone is super dark Love these. They you can't you could you can't tell if you've never held you know if you've held one you know, but if you haven't you can't tell. There's like a little ridge there because like the border is actually on top of the card. So those are those are fun. I think there was a black parallel to those too. Scoring power, very cool. Flare insert, and then some white. Oh oh oh. And then a dynamic dunks, which has a foil to it. And then some then some white chocolate, some Jason Williams. Just one of the one of the good old boys. 0405 showcase. Ooh, shiny. Ooh, shiny. Love these. Love these. Not really actively going after him, but I do have a sport lot box order of some low end stuff and they're the kind of things that, like, as I'm going through card show boxes, you know, if I can find them in there, I probably pick them up, but I'm not really heading to eBay. So, and then, just a couple of days ago, oh, maybe I should just put those back in the box. That'll just make life easier so I don't have a stack over here that falls off. Sorry, I'm not getting through this pretty quickly, so 
Uh, if you're uh, if you're still watching, that's awesome. But two days ago, so it's Friday, so Wednesday, I got an envelope in the mail from him. I saw it on my informed delivery. I'm like, oh, what is it this time? So this is a key ingredient gold from 9798 Fleer Basketball. What I think is cool is you're definitely talking the early days of acetate. I know this wouldn't have been the first because Collector's Edge did some acetates in like 94, 93 maybe. Um, but yeah, acetate, very cool. And he told me that, uh, he told me in his note that he had a uh, Sean Kemp like this back in the day that he loved and uh, he wanted to pass this on. And yeah, definitely a very cool card. Um, very excited to have this because it's, it's something I probably would never have added on my own because to be honest, I'm not a real big fan of the the Rockets Charles Barkley. Um I just didn't like those uniforms. If they'd been the uniforms they just had a few years prior when they were in the finals, I probably would be a bigger fan. But super glad to have this. And like I said, I would not have even known, you know, that it was this acetate-type look and never, never would have picked it up if not for Jeremy. So thank you, sir. You are you are a very good man. You are great for the hobby and I love how much you you take care of and help out other people so this was from a YouTuber but it was a purchase uh, Garrett Card Cutter was selling off some autographed cards um, that didn't really fit into his collection so I picked this Rusty Greer up so this is not for me this is actually for a local collector that I know that's just a diehard Rusty Greer fan and you know, I got the I placed the minimum bid and I won it. So I was like, you know, we'll send it off. I think I won it for even shipped. I think it was still like only like two fifty, maybe three bucks. So I will send this off to that fellow collector that I have sent stuff to before when I found some random Rusty Greer stuff. So now we'll talk about the Dallas Card Show pickups. Um, I did not do a separate video since I'm just not really doing videos. So I didn't really plan on buying much. I'd kind of walked the show. Wasn't really in the, you know, with all the, the the COVID stuff and all. I really wasn't in the mood to sit down and go through boxes. Until I get a text from Jeremy that says, uh, Dude, this guy's got some shiny Earnhardts over here. Uh, you might want to come look at these. And uh, it was a $2 box. And I bought, uh, let's just say, at the show I sold off um, some unopened Prism basketball some unopened optic basketball and some bowman draft pick sapphire boxes that i had and really was about to walk out of the show and really not buy much i i was gonna stop by roger's table on my way out and i did actually buy something from roger you'll see at the end but he told me to go through this, and he, uh, Jeremy told me to come over to this table. So I went through and I started looking through the the NASCAR and pulled out some Dale Earnhardt's uh, that I'm going to show you because they're from my personal collection. But then I ended up pulling out a lot more um, for stuff to kind of put into my boxes to resell uh, when I'm setting up. Um, just picked up some Hall of Fame caliber guys, but... Uh, the stuff I got for myself was Earnhardt. I think I picked up a couple of other random ones, but I don't have those in here. But since I've been showing some Earnhardts, I figure I'll show a little more. I did not pay anywhere close to $12 for this. It was a $2 box, and I bought a lot, so I ended up getting you know, a break on that, too. This one I love because I am pretty sure, and I should have confirmed, but this is the card that my first Dale that has my first Dale Earnhardt signature obviously this is just a, a regular copy of it but you can see kind of a foil look to the back so it's got some shine to it uh, I'm not even really sure why I would have picked that one up oh there we go numbered out of 175 I know in NASCAR they like to do they'll do a drop you know there's not a lot of drivers players so, you know, usually you'll get a player and a car card in the set. And car cards are not typically popular, but when it's an iconic iconic car like uh, Dale Earnhardt had, whether it be the GM, the Wrangler, or any of his special paint schemes, I'm still cool with picking them up. Don't care as much about his post, 
racing, which was really post-life, posthumous career. But what was cool about this Legends one was Focus, four ninety nine out of four ninety nine. I just thought that was super cool. So for a couple of bucks, I wasn't going to pick miss that one. Just love the look of this with the black, the red. You know, the the design and everything just kind of goes with it. It's uh, this was a Shoney's card. Not sure where all they are throughout the country, but I know they're in the southeast. And there was one in my hometown, so I just got some some shiny foil board. So I was like, yeah, let's go with it. I didn't pick up every Earnhardt that was in there. I picked up, a, you know, just the ones that were nice looking or had a reason. This one, I mean, for like I said, less than two bucks. Just a serial number card. Basic. And honestly, you don't find a ton. Of, I won't say, I won't make it sound like they're rare, but, you know, I feel like most of his cards, he's got his sunglasses on. Because, I mean, the dude just always had them on. So that was cool. And then these, these are like the size of those, you know, like around 95, the, what was that, power play in hockey, uh, extra bases maybe in baseball, I can't remember what the, the basketball and football brands were, but these are like oversized cards, but these were by Press Pass, I'd never seen those before, I don't remember any oversized cards, so I thought, eh, they'll fit well in there, a little oddball, I don't know how they're really going to fit in the binder don't know what we'll do maybe I'll just keep them with the the slab cards that I have Monte Carlo assaults so that was uh, part of my uh, Dallas card show and then I picked up three additional cards so I picked up these random Z nuts I had never owned Z nuts before these were Pacific Coast League cards from maybe 1917 was the first set maybe it was 1919 i can't recall somewhere in the you know the mid to late 19 teens up until the early 30s again pacific coast league you know these were low-end ones they were in a stack so you just go through so you're not going to find any names you know so i just kind of went through them just wanted to have a have a couple but what i did is I pick the three that have back stamps. If you've seen some of my T206 videos or other vintage, I have some flags cards from Nuff Said cards um, that have back stamps. I just love back stamps. But I decided to go through here real quick. Um, I got all three of these for 20 bucks total. So it's just for some fun. So this 1919 card is Brick Eldred. I uh, went through and took a quick gander what I could. Uh, 13 years in the Pacific Coast League, mostly with the Seattle Rainiers and Indians. I don't know if that was a two different teams or a team that changed their name. Uh, he also played with the Salt Lake City Bears and Sacramento. Uh, I don't know. I don't recall what their team name was, uh, but that was where he was born. He grew up and he died. Uh, for me, what's kind of cool is, and again, this is just happenstance, he played at with Wichita Falls Sputters in 1929. Uh, Wichita Falls is about an hour and a half, two hours north of here. Um, he hit 369 in 1929 and then uh, went back to Sacramento to finish his career in 1930. And he is a Pacific Coast League Hall of Famer elected in 2003 as a player. His career in the Pacific Coast League, uh, 2,034 hits, 755 RBIs, 57 homers, 219 stolen bases in 1,700 games. So that's something I want to do more as I pick these random ones up. I'm going to kind of, you know, part of going along with the reading is hopefully I hear some of these names through some of the reading I do, but I still want to start kind of looking these up a little bit more. This is Orville McMurtry of the San Francisco Seals. Uh, he played four seasons, 1925 to 27, and then 29. Those first three were in the Pacific Coast League with Salt Lake City and San Francisco. Uh, he pitched in 54 games with a 23-25 record and an unknown ERA, but I'm guessing it was pretty high if he only pitched for four years. But got a little wanderer at 1523 Weber Street. Love the back stamps. And my final one, again, these were all just, I just picked them up because they had the stamps. If there had been four, I'd have probably gotten all four of them. 
This is a 1929 Roy Anton of the Oakland Oaks. He played 13 seasons, uh, the first nine with Oakland. Um, he played a little over 1,500 games with a 298 batting average, a little over 1,600 hits, um, 5,400 plate appearances, 106 home runs, and unknown on the RBIs. So that finishes up what I got from the Dallas Card Show. If you're still hanging in, yeah. Thanks. Sorry. Not really sure. <laughs> so let's move over to an eBay purchase. It's going to be themed or it's going to go along with something earlier. I picked up yet another Dale Earnhardt autograph, and that is number five. Um, they're getting a little uglier, the signatures are, as I acquire more, mostly because I've picked up the affordable, good-looking ones, so now the more affordable ones either don't look as good or, you know, any number of things, but we'll probably get this reholdered uh, through PSA. I'll work with Garrett Card Cutter because um, he does autograph authentication with PSA, but... I will definitely say that, you know, the the thrill, the first Earnhardt was super exciting, and then the second one was about half the excitement. And as I've started to collect a little bit more, and it, like I said, this one's not as pretty looking, I'm happy to have it, but definitely uh, definitely some of the excitement is, uh, has worn off. So, from eBay to a Sport Lots purchase, Mario Andretti. This is from the All World. Uh, it was a Mario Andretti set. It was a box set that was released in early 90s. I'm sure I can see on the back. 1991 by, well, Collect a Card. I guess AW, A&W cards and Collect a Card were the same, which I just now learned. I was today days old when I figured that out. Um, kind of runs through his uh, career. There were, you know, there were 2,500 of these. Um, I haven't looked extremely hard, but I wouldn't say that they're rare. Kind of like any other junk era card, there was probably hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these made. So still, even out of 2,500, they're still you're not going to find them in like every other set or something like that. So excited to add another Mario Andretti autograph to my collection. So next were are some T210s. I picked up from a local collector that I've picked up a lot of my other T210s. He contacted me. He was looking to kind of get out of them. He was going to start putting his money elsewhere. He has a player collection that what he needs that's left is rather expensive. So he, uh, he asked me and he gave me a price. And at that price, I was buying regardless of whether I needed them. Come to find out, they get home. I needed these two. And this one, while I had a copy, it was a graded copy, so it would not fit in the binder with the team set unless I had decided to crack it, which I probably wouldn't have done. So now I have the graded one, which I may turn around for something else. But the one that I did have is Sandy Burke. Uh, can't really find anything on his minor league career, but what I can find is he was in the majors from 1910, which is the year these were produced, until 1913. Um, 1910 to 12, he was with the Brooklyn Superbas or Superbaws. I don't know how you say that, slash Dodgers when they changed their name. And then his uh, last two years uh, with the Cardinals. Um, in his major league career, he had 50 appearances, 19 starts. He was 2-11 and 11 with a 4.54 ERA, so... Not exactly the uh, storied career he was probably hoping for, but let's just call it what it is. He made the big, so he had more of a – he had an impact at the higher level than his other two uh, teammates that you're seeing here. So this is William Powell. I can't really find anything on his time in Fort Worth. Um, now I've got some – I've got an, actually a book. One of those books that's coming is on Fort Worth baseball, so maybe down the road I will know something. Um, baseball reference doesn't have any stats for him in 1910, but they list him as playing with Houston, Galveston, and Austin in the Texas League. 
1911. So, I don't know. I suspect that he's the Bill Powell that played for the Pirates, Cubs, Reds. Um, the birth date on the trading card database matches, but I don't really have any other info for him. Uh, but what, for me personally, is kind of cool is he's from, he was born in Taylor County, West Virginia, which just a little bit of it borders the county that I grew up in, Monongalia County. So a little bit of a local flavor for me. Last one is Ike Isaac Ike Pendleton, and this is the card I was doing the research on him. Actually helped me find uh, one of the books that I ordered and in turn the other books. Um, he played 12 seasons of professional ball, all in the minors. His baseball reference stats are very incomplete. Um... What I found interesting is he was listed as playing with the Fort Worth Panthers in 1908 and 9, but not 1910, which is the year the card was released. That year he was listed as playing with Houston, Waco, and Victoria. So, who the hell knows? Uh, so my Fort Worth, my T210 Fort Worth Panthers team set is now at 14 of 16. I need just the Walter Morris. And the Charles Weatherford, and I know the Morris is going to cost me a pretty penny because it is a horizontal card, which on old tobacco cards tend to command a premium, and from what I've seen, that one will. So the final is a nice little, nice little group of T206 cards. So if you've held on this long and you like the T206s, you'll perhaps you have been rewarded. So the info I've got on these guys is from the uh, the Tom and Ellen Zap Zapala, Zapala book, the T206 collections, the player and their stories, and I have the original version. There is an updated one that I don't have yet. So this is Frederick Thomas Payne, as he was known, Fred Payne. 16-year professional career in the bigs. He hit as high as 270, but as low as .067, .067. Uh, his career batting average was just a two fifteen. He did get four at bats in the 1907 World Series. Uh, hit his only career homer in 1911. That was the year this particular card was produced and the final his final big league season. I was watching a video recently. I don't remember if it was Drew, who is lefty NDV 10, maybe? I can't remember what his number is. But anyway... He said that the 150s, I did not know this, the 150s are from 1909, the 350s are from 1910, and the 350 460s are from 1911. So you can, some of them you can do that way, but then there are some that don't have the number of subjects on them, some backs. Um, anyway, he returned to the minors as a player and manager after his big league career was over. Second one, Lee Ford Tannehill, and I have gotten them out of order because that is not Lee Tannehill. No, oh, that would be because the first one was Lee Tannehill. <laughs> That's great. So the guy that I just talked about is Fred Payne, which is this guy I don't nobody's going to watch this whole video I could pretty much talk to myself and nobody would know I could say random stupid thing well more stupid things okay so anyway let's get back Mr. Tannehill Mr. Tannehill uh, had played 10 years with the White Sox and was definitely a defensive specialist his career batting average was 220 over a 10 year career and his slugging was 273 um but a little bit of history, on August 4th, 1911, he turned two unassisted triple plays in one game, the only shortstop to do so. And it's a 150 Piedmont back. All of these backs are common backs, Piedmonts. Uh, they may all be Piedmonts. Yep, they're all Piedmonts. There's no Caporals in there. Let's make sure I got it right this time. Lewis Henry... Finn, I'm going to say that name is Finn, F-I-E-N-E, -E. and the reason I'm going to do that is because his name, nickname was Big Finn. 
Uh, he was on the 1906 White Sox championship team, but he did not have any appearances in the series. Um, he got sporadic tries with the White Sox from 1906 to 08, but received his, his real shot in 1909, but went two for five, two and five with a 412 ERA. And 1909 was his last year in the majors. So, all right, who we got here? We have Frank Malcolm Owen, or Frank Owen as he's known. He was nicknamed Yip because he was from Ypsilanti, Michigan. I just, anytime I can say the word or the name Ypsilanti, I'm going to do that. Uh, He did have three straight seasons of 20 or more wins with the Sox. Uh, 1904 was his best season. He was 21 of 15 with a 194 ERA. Um, in 1905, he went 21 and 13, and in 1906, 22 and 13. Uh, after his big league career, he pitched three seasons in the minors and retired in 1911. The card was produced in 1909, his first year back in the minors, but he's designated, as you can see there, with the White Sox. So that is Frank Owen. So from Frank Owen to Frank Julian, or perhaps Julian Arlanis. He was just, he went by Frank Arlanis. Uh, one of the first Latin American ballplayers uh, in 1909. Come on, let's focus a little more, buddy. Come on, there we go. In 1909, he went 16 and 12 with a 218 ERA and led the league in saves with eight. Uh, in that 1909 season, he was replacing Cy Young in the rotation, so yeah, that had to be fun. After his time with the Red Sox, he returned to the West Coast, which is where he was from, and played in the minors until he retired at the age of 35. And he died at the age of 36 during the flu pandemic. Interesting, uh, considering our uh, interesting timing, considering what's going on. I don't know if he died because of that. It just the information said during. We're almost there, two to go. William Herschel Lattimore, or as he went by Bill Lattimore. So for me, it's kind of cool. He's from Roxton, Texas, not too far, uh, a little bit northeast of the Fort Worth, Dallas area. Um, he only pitched four games in the big leagues, uh, all in 1908 with the Cleveland Naps, which would have been before this card. And you see there he's, with, he's listed as with Toledo. He did finish his playing career in 1910 with Fort Worth Panthers. Just funny how that works because that team set, the the red borders, that's the 1910 Old Mill Fort Worth Panthers set, but he is not in that set. So just interesting little, always fun, the, 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 the funness of all these old things and how they can tie together. So... I haven't been real active in the T206s lately. Holy crap, I'm at 37 minutes. Jesus, I just, I don't shut up. I like to hear myself talk. Anyway, haven't been extremely fired up about the T206s. I'm still not. The reason I bought this lot was this card of Charles Arnold Gandal. Or, as you probably have heard of him, come on, focus. Chick Gandal of come on there we go of the 1909 Black Sox scandal focus there we go I got a covered little mountaineer up so he is best known as the ringleader among the players uh, on the 1919 Black Sox Uh, he ran away from home at the age of 17 to play ball along the Mexican border and to help make ends meet, he boxed as a heavyweight for $150 a fight. Uh, he debuted in, the, in major leagues in 1910. In 1913, he was sixth in the MVP voting. He finished in uh, eighth in the league in batting average and RBIs, and eleventh. I'm sorry, seventh in hits. So his final game was in that 1919 World Series, September 28th, and he was banned from baseball by. Kennesaw Mountain Landis, who banned them all, and he denied involvement until his death. But there's just the T206s, I'm just not as enamored as I was at one time. But I need to do some work on my collection, I need to, to work on my spreadsheet, and I need to 
get some of these cards. I've got probably about another page full. I've probably got a close to 15 or 20 of these that I need to get into my binder, but I need to do some, like I said, some database work first. So maybe I'll get back into it. It was fun to look through my tobacco card binder the other day. So we shall see. But yeah, on those, I want to get the Bull Durham just because of the name. You, you know, we know who he is. I want to get the Shag Shaughnessy. Um, but those are the only two that I can really sit here right now and go, yeah, I want to get those that are ones that aren't like Hall of Famers. Yeah, I want to get any of the Ty Cobbs, but that's going to be for another day. So going to let it go in 40 minutes. Good Lord. I'm sorry. But um, if you stayed this long, I hope you enjoyed it. And don't know when I'll be posting again. But for now, happy collecting, y'all. And I will see you down the road.